United uh, 534, we're 30 miles west of Civet. You know, it's 320 at 20 degrees north uh, of, of the horizon, and it's probably... Oh yeah, uh, there it is. Either the SpaceX satellites, or maybe it's the Perseus, there's a Perseus meter shower this week. It's not a satellite, and it's not a meteor. No, yeah, these things are not moving like a meteor. They're, uh, it looks like they're uh, orbiting every now and then. Uh, Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. I had an amazing interview with Captain Christopher Van Voorhees. Chris is a commercial airline pilot. He's been flying for five decades. He's seen many things in the air. He's been a commercial airline pilot for 35 years. He was involved in the recent racetrack UAP sighting over the Pacific, and it definitely wasn't Starlink satellites, according to Captain Chris Van Voorhees. It stays in the same position of the sky, close to the Big Dipper, but visible in the same spot from 200 miles or more away from each other. Amazing story, amazing interview. He also relays another sighting from 2004 that he personally saw of instantaneous acceleration, three saucers entering the atmosphere and then accelerating away. Amazing interview. Thanks for being here. Please smash that like button. If you do like this content, subscribe for future notifications and then support the channel at patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. I'm putting up exclusive videos just about Chris Lato, behind the scenes access. Don't miss out. Let's get to the video. You know, if you see something, it's hard to document. So um, we had a, an anomaly a couple months back that, that we were seeing and we were all talking about it uh, amongst each other. And it, the conversation started out with another aircraft. Uh, I hate to say this, but are you guys seeing what we're seeing? And it went on from there. Um, that was over the Pacific, right? The, basically, uh, Chris Hersley mentioned it. Uh, yeah, that whole sighting. So can you just talk through? I guess it doesn't need to be in huge detail, but uh, your experience there. You know, you saw it. You mentioned with the cabin crew. Yeah, actually, I, I was able to see it twice. I saw it once between Honolulu and Los Angeles, and the next time between uh, Japan and Honolulu. So uh, the, the first time, as a matter of fact, uh, my uh, uh, co-pilot, my first officer, was talking about, hey, when we were doing this last trip, that we saw some weird stuff that was right down below the, the uh, Big Dipper over to the right side. And pretty soon, uh, sure enough, we see this bright light, which is pretty much brighter than any one of the stars or Jupiter or Saturn in the sky, uh, it appears down below the, the, uh, the Big Dipper, right about where he said it would be. And we could actually see movement to it. Um, there were some that appeared to be stationary and whether or not this is the same uh, anomaly or five or six of them, uh, I don't have any idea because it would come on very bright. And it was, <clears throat> you know, people say, well, it, it was a satellite and the satellites move in a linear fashion. They don't move in a curved fashion to start with. And also they have a very regular type of, of lighting pattern to them. And then when the, the sun is not reflecting on it and when you don't see the light, you'll actually still be able to see the satellite most of the time. And this was very distinct and, and very odd. And that's why we were all talking about it. And that was because they would come on at odd intervals. Uh, it's not like a, a timed interval where you can say, you know, okay, it's on, it, it's off, it's on, it's off. This would be on for quite a while and then fade and then kind of turn and fade away. And then another one would come into view up above it and be on for a while. And there was just no interval to it, which is very unusual for, uh, if it were to be a satellite. I, do you see a lot of satellites? Oh yeah. And, you know, people were like, well, you know, uh, maybe it was Starlink. No, we've seen Starlink. I've seen all the, the string of satellites that it creates going across the sky. And it's really, it's neat to watch. But, you know, most of us know what that is. Um, you know, you're up there for thousands of hours at night. You see some strange stuff and you go back and research it. And this was uh, one of those things where, okay, we, matter of fact, uh, there was a Starlink launch uh, the day prior, and we did see the string of starlight satellites uh, that same evening. Uh, and it was not associated with it in any way, shape, or form. 
So that's that's amazing because, you know, when I looked at it, my initial impression is it, it, I agreed with Starlink option, you know, because for me it was thinking it's in the same place of the sky every time just seemed like um, it felt like a satellite, you know, and, and with if it's in that same spot. But I didn't see it, obviously, you know, that's just what I thought. Initial impressions. I'm, I'm kind of surprised to hear you say it, actually. Yeah, the interesting thing about it was is if it is a satellite, um, <clears throat> then you would expect when you go back up to see it in the same place. It wasn't there. It didn't reoccur. It was we saw it for maybe a solid month or so. And then it, it you know, off and on. And then after that, I haven't seen it since. Huh. And <clears throat> I've been looking, you know, when I have uh, uh, trips in the, in the evening or at night, I've been scouring the skies to see if I can find it again. I haven't been able to find it again. And one thing about uh, especially a geosynchronous type of satellite is the fact they're mostly out over the equator. And uh, the anomaly that we saw, uh, it was near the Big Dipper, but it also moved in a non-linear type of fashion, mm -hmm. which was non, it's, it's, it's something that a satellite doesn't do. Not saying it's not, you know, military, not saying it's something that another country may may have this proving or testing out there. I don't know. But the fact is that where it appeared down below uh, the Big Dipper on the right hand side uh, <clears throat> multiple times for us and basically did the same thing would lead me to believe that it's uh, something that's in not in inner atmosphere type of anomaly. It's It's got to be fairly far out in space because no matter where we move across the Pacific, it was in the same area. So that huh. leads me to believe that, you know, if I saw it coming out of Japan, it was in the same area, as well as seeing it in the same area going to Los Angeles. It tells me that it's something that's way out there and it's not something that's uh, in near or near Earth orbit. Wow. I, I guess because um, there were several planes, right, that saw it at the same time. Yes. Yes. Did that give any sort of feeling, like a triangulation kind of feeling for where it was? And that, if that's your feeling, I guess it's far away. Well, we were listening to airplanes that were several hundred miles even north of us, and they were yeah. seeing the same thing. So, and, and they're seeing it in the same area. So, again, if it's in a near Earth orbit, you're going to have, even with a couple hundred miles, there's going to be some what a slight difference, and you'd probably be able to triangulate, at least get some idea where it might be located. And this, you weren't able to do that because it was in, a, in the same area for all of us. Wow. And I guess and you, it sounds like it happened over a long kind of period of time. Yeah, I would say people were seeing it for over a month. And when it, the actual engagements, how long <laughs> were they happening? You know, what was, what was you say? Um, well, I, I'd said this uh, before. It was actually until we got bored with it. You know, it, oh, there it is again. OK, it's still there. Um, wow. So it would happen, and, and that's the other thing about an anomaly with a satellite, especially if in a lower Earth orbit. It will happen for a while, and then once it's not reflecting the sun anymore, it goes away. Well, this continued yeah. for hours going across the Pacific. So yeah, that's what I was trying to figure <laughs> out. You know, because if it is a, a, a satellite flare, it, it it should only happen when the sun is in the perfect right spot, essentially, right? I mean, just for that's that one time where the sun is going through that. Where it that's happens correct. to flare, so if it's going on for several hours, that's yeah, that's correct. crazy. I did, yeah, I didn't know that. And and the thing with these, uh, especially with the UAPs like this, um, you know, we aren't in the realm of uh, Bigfoot or, if you want to say, the Loch Ness monster, something that you see it once and then you don't see it again. This was seen by multiple people over multiple nights, and it was something that, uh, you know, was is actually recordable and actually there. But of course we don't have radar out over the Pacific. And, and even if we did, I doubt we would have picked up anything because it's in a, you know, in a, in a higher orbit or it's out in space far enough that it wouldn't be picked up by any type of radar. Wow. And then what was the color of it? Um, just, it was uh, white pretty much. Um, it didn't really have too much of a color range to it. When it would fade out, it would go to an, uh, an orange color and then it would just, that's the other thing about satellites. When the, the satellite 
is rotating and it picks up the sun, it will gradually go out. These would go plunk and go be gone. Hmm. So <clears throat> it wouldn't be something that would be gradually dimming. These would just come on and go off very rapidly. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. You, you know, the Air Force does have a space plane that they've been sending up there for decades, I think. You know, I, yes. I just see it in the news. I don't know. I have no idea what it does. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there are space planes flying around. Well, you know, that's one of the, the things that one of my friends said, oh, it's probably the Aurora. And the Aurora is something we have. Um, there, there's a reason that we don't use SR-71s anymore for reconnaissance. It's all either done by satellites or high altitude uh, aircraft or, or low space trajectory type of aircraft. Um, I've seen things that could be the Aurora. Now, the Aurora isn't going to be, you know, in the same era, er, area. It's not going to be <clears throat> coming on and going off like that. So, um, you know, th that's why it was so perplexing to us. It wasn't anything that we could really pinpoint, put our finger on logically and say, um, this is what it is, or it could possibly be this. Um, it didn't fall into the designs or the standards of anything that you would say would be a normal type of uh, anomaly you'd see in space. I guess we had any ground reports from Daniel Whitaker. If you can see the questions on the front. Were there any ground reports? Uh, actually, uh, I understand that there were quite a few fishing boats that were reporting things. I have not seen any personally. Huh. Um, but uh, I understood that there were some fishing boats that were reporting it out over the, uh, the, uh, the ocean as well. This is a question, and maybe for one of the other sighting we were talking about before, before we started here, but does it appear that the objects are coming from outside our atmosphere? Any data to corroborate? So. Well, on these objects uh, uh, that we were seeing, they were pretty much, I would say, stationary in the way of uh, they weren't entering it into the atmosphere or out of the atmosphere. Uh, the anomaly that I saw in 2004 when I was returning uh, from Japan to Honolulu, I was working for a subsidiary of Japan Airlines at that point in time. And we saw three objects uh, actually enter the atmosphere. And it was when the sun hadn't come up yet, but there's a thin sliver of blue on a horizon and as these three objects came into the atmosphere, they were reflecting the sun. So they were very, very high up in the atmosphere uh, in order to be reflecting the sun. And uh, they, as they entered the atmosphere, they came in, paused and stopped. They somewhat reoriented themselves slowly. And then they just, it was instantaneous acceleration uh, out over the horizon and gone. And that's something that is a completely different type of anomaly than what we are seeing in, in, in space now. That was an actual physical thing that we saw. These are pretty much lights that we've been seeing and you can't actually discern any physical body to it or, or you can't really say that it, it's a craft of, well, you know, it's something out there, but you don't know what it is. You can't actually see the, the size and shape of it. You mentioned, um, okay, let's, uh... But we'll go on to that to that other sighting. But anything else to add? You think about this uh, over the Pacific? Did you were you able to talk to the other pilots? It sounds like you talked to a few of them that also saw it. Oh yeah, and I've talked to several pilots with the uh, the, the current airline I work with, and they they saw it as well. And now they aren't interested probably uh, as much as I am in this, and and plus the the type of connotations that this brings up. Um, they, they just want to back off from it. Um, I'm a year, a little over a year away from retirement, so I may be a little bit uh, more apt to speak out than them when they have 20 or 30 years ahead of them. Uh, but yeah, because uh, you mentioned your employer wasn't necessarily happy about <laughs> you speaking out, <laughs> right? It sounds like. No, they don't want to have their name dragged into it whatsoever. Um, you know, and it's a really, sh it's a shame because it would have a chance to be on maybe the forefront of, of something that even we're going to be going to Congress with mm -hmm. and uh, trying to uh, put some type of reporting system. Now, NASA just did come up with a, a reporting system. They have 16 scientists and 
other aviation officials that are going to be uh, putting together a, a type of reporting system where not only military pilots but civilian pilots can, can you know, put their two cents in. And uh, you're to... right. Yeah, they had the FAA. FAA plans and procedure director was in there. Yes. I was happy to see that. Also, the aviation safety directorate. Yeah, so they've put together quite a good team, and we'll see where it goes. This is one of the first steps, and this is one of the things that, if it wasn't for someone like myself speaking out, that you know it would fall on the back burner and probably wouldn't get done. Uh, so, just in in retrospect, you know, I was saying that uh, I was working for the subsidiary, subsidiary of Japan Airlines. Um, when <clears throat> when you work for a company like that, mum's the word. So. We all saw it, the aircraft in front of us saw those three anomalies come in. Uh, we talked to another aircraft that actually saw it as well, um, but no one reported anything just from the standpoint of, um, I don't know if you recall or, or know about uh, uh, Japan Airlines uh, 1628, flight 1628, which was actually a cargo flight from Paris to Narita, Tokyo, Japan, back in uh, on November 17th in 1986. Uh, one of the captains, uh, his name was uh, Kenju uh, Terauchi, uh, was flying, and their entire crew saw three uh, actual craft, uh, similar to what I described, over the Anchorage area, and it was picked up on radar. They had the radar tracks to it. The military saw it on their radar, and it was very well documented. Matter of fact, it was one of the best documented cases of ufo or uap uh type of anomalies out there and when he got back to japan he got a desk job for <laughs> years and years and years so <clears throat> it wasn't right for us to be reporting uh anomalies back then because of that stereotype <clears throat> which actually prevails in, 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 today even air, airlines they don't want to have anything to do with it they just um you know, they, they think that the, the pilots, if you're reporting something like that, um, <clears throat> need to go in and, and uh, have uh, their, another physical exam and have their mental capabilities checked, um, which we do every six months anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the thing is that this poor guy, um, Captain Terauchi, uh, ended up flying a desk for, for many years because of what he saw. And mm -hmm. the other crew even backed him up. But they still gave him a desk. They finally let him back uh, to fly, I think, uh, several years uh, later. But it's a real shame that rather than people approaching it from the scientific standpoint of it, they put it in the realm of a paranormal, uh, which, you know, it may not be or it may be. Uh, it depends on the scientific knowledge that's put together and the background that's used to discern what we're looking at. Thank you for sharing your experience, Captain. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Well, a pleasure. well uh, have a great rest of your day. Take oh, care. Thank Thanks you for very being much. here, mate. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like button, subscribe for future content, and join Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato, or click the little button right here. It says Patreon, hopefully. Have a great day. Peace.